Hi, I'm Rebecca from Amber Makes. I'm going to show you how to sew the duffel tote, available in these beautiful prints as a kit for you. This useful bag is ideal for storing your latest craft project or supplies. Cutting out the pieces from the panel. When you get your kit, unfold the fabric and give it a good press to remove any of the creases that were in there during the packaging. Now, have a look at the panel and you will see that there are lots of pieces on them on it. All the seam allowances are printed onto the pieces, so all you need to do is cut round the very outer edge of them. You don't need to add any extra on. You can either use a rotary cutter for this or scissors, depending on which you prefer. It's best to cut out one piece at a time. You will see that all the pieces are labelled. There is a printed label printed just above each fabric piece. As you cut out each fabric piece, cut out the label that's printed above it. It's really important that you remember and know which piece is which when you're assembling. So if you do this as you go along and pin the printed label to the top of it, then you'll be able to remember whilst you're making your duffel tote. Once you've cut out all of the pieces, put them to one side so they're ready to use later. Making the handles. Take one of the handle pieces and fold it in half with right sides together lengthways so that the raw ed two raw long edges are meeting. Then press it together down the length to create a nice fold. Then you need to sew it together like this to finish the sewn handle. Now, to get a neater finish when you turn it right sides out, it's easier if you press the seam open at this stage because you will get a neater, crisper seam when it's right sides out. Just so, just fold the seam open, take your iron and press it. You'll save lots of time later on trying to get that seam to lie right on the edge if you press it at this stage. Once the seam is pressed open, you need to turn it right sides out. There's many ways of doing this, but I prefer to use a turning tube. All you do is pop the tube inside and take the wooden stick using the blunt end Fold the edge inwards, the short end, to the inside of the tube and then push it all the way through and you will find that the end of the tube comes out of the plastic tube. So quick and easy. Now all you need to do is roll the edges, the seam, so it lays flat on the top and press it. And then you're going to top stitch it down both long edges just to neaten it. Make the other handle in exactly the same way until you've got a pair of matching handles. Attaching the handles. Take one of your top stitched handles and the front out of the bag. Measure one and a quarter of inches in from the right hand side and mark with a pin. Place the outer edge of the handle at this point and measure it so that half an inch of the handle is sticking out beyond the top of the bag. This will make it extra secure and it won't get pulled out when you filled up the bag later. Pin it into place across the top and then a little bit further down. This is just to stop it getting twisted during assembly. Now take the other end of the handle, making sure that it's not twisted. Measure and mark one and a quarter of an inch in from the side and make sure the handle's sticking half an inch above. Stitch it into place. Once you've pinned it into place, stitch it into place across the top and then repeat this to pin and tack the other handle to the back outer in the same positions. Making the casing. Take one casing piece and work a machine zigzag down one short end. This is to stop it fraying later. But it reduces bulk with inside the casing, which is why you don't hem it twice. Now turn this short edge over by half an inch to the wrong side of the casing piece and then just pin it into place. Now 
stitch this to hem the end. Once it's stitched, repeat to hem the other short end in exactly the same way. Now fold the casing in half lengthways so that it is right sides out. The wrong sides will be touching each other. Fold it all the way down the edge, making sure those raw long edges are matching up. Now you need to tack it down the edge, which is just a long machine stitch worked within the seam allowance. Then repeat this to make the other casing in exactly the same way. Attaching the casing. Pin one casing right sides facing to the top edge of the front outer. It needs to be placed centrally across the width of the front outer with the top raw edges matching. Pin it into place, making sure these raw edges match all the way along. You will notice that it sits on top of the handles. Now tack it into place all the way along the edge, just within the seam allowance to hold. Then repeat this to tack the other casing to the back outer in exactly the same way. Making the outer. Take the front outer that you've just attached the casing to and place it right sides facing with the back outer. We're now going to sew the two pieces together. So make sure the raw edges are matching and pin it together down the left right hand side. Pin it together at the ends and then you can pin it together at the centre point. Now don't pin it round the cut out corners, leave those unpinned but pin it together across the bottom edge. Again, leave the cutout corners unpinned and then pin it together along the side. Now we're going to sew it, sew it down one side, leave that cutout corner unpinned because we'll be sewing that one later. Sew it together across the bottom. Again, leave that cutout corner unstitched and then sew it together up the other side to finish. Boxing the corners. Once you've sewn it together all the way around, open out one of the cut out corner sections that you didn't sew. Press the side seam flat and turn it over and press the bottom seam open and flat. Now pin these two seams together. It's important that they match for a neat finish. So push a pin through one seam and make sure that it comes out exactly through the other seam. Hold the pin tight and put another pin horizontally through and remove the first pin. Now you know that your seams match. Now lay the corner out nice and flat and take a pin and pin it along at one end of the corner and pin it at the other end of the corner. Now sew together along this seam. Once you've sewn the seam, give it a press. Now fold and pin the other corner in the same way, matching seams, and give it a press. Making the pockets. Take one pocket outer and one pocket lining and place them right sides facing so all the raw edges are matching. Along the top edge, pin together, making sure that you've got the raw edges matching of the pocket outer and the pocket lining. Place pins at one end then in the centre and then put a pin at the other end. Now stitch together along the top and the bottom edges. Once that's done, keep it wrong sides out and press those seams open. 
By pressing the seams open from the wrong side first, it's easier to get them to lay on the edge, right on the edge in a minute when you turn it right sides out. To press the top seam open, then repeat to replace, press, press the bottom seeds, seams open. You're not going to stitch or press the sides. They'll be left open for now. Now turn the whole pocket right sides out. The seam now needs to lie right on the top edge and right on the bottom edge so that you get a neat finish. So just roll them slightly with your fingers to make sure the seam is right on the edge. Give it a press at the top and the bottom. Now top stitch all the way along just the top edge only. And repeat this with the other pocket out of lining to make another pocket in exactly the same way. Attaching the pockets. Take the front lining and place it right sides up. Now take one of the pockets that you've just made and place it right sides up on top of that with the top stitch line at the top. Now take your tape measure and measure half an inch up from the bottom edge of the top of the cutout corner, not the bottom of the front lining, but the top of the cut cutout corner, as you can see here. Measure half an inch above the bottom at the other side. Now take the pocket and place the bottom edge of it level with these pins then pin it into place all the way along. It's positioned just up from the bottom edge here so the pocket sits at the bottom of your bag once it's assembled later. Now you're going to stitch across this bottom edge, down the right hand side and then down the left hand side. Once you've stitched it, this is work, this sit stitching is a top stitching. It's worked about three mils, about an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the side. Now you need to divide your pocket up. I've stitched two vertical lines in mine, working from the bottom up to the top and then stitching back down again. This makes it extra strong and won't come undone. Take the back lining and the other pocket and repeat to attach the pocket in the same place. Again, stitch vertical spacing, but you can make these space differently apart depending on what tools you're going to keep in your pockets. Making the lining. Place the front lining and the back lining right sides facing and stitch them together in the same way as you did with the back outer. Stitch them down one side, leave the cut out corner, but when you stitch across the bottom, leave a four inch gap unstitched. This will be the turning gap that you'll use later. Don't stitch round that bottom corner, but stitch up the other side. Now we're going to box the corners in exactly the same way as we did with the outer. So open them up and place the base seam and the side seam so that the seams match exactly and pin together. You can press these flat like I did with the outer or just press them to one side. It won't matter as much with the lining because it isn't as visible. Pin the box corner together all the way along. Then sew the box corner into place and repeat with the other corner. Now the box corners are stitched. There's the turning gap in the lining and the other box corner is stitched in exactly the same way. Assembling the bag. Place the bag outer inside the bag lining, making sure that they are right sides facing. Now you need to find one of the side seams on the bag outer and place this right sides facing with one of the side seams on the bag lining. Make sure that the, lining, the two seams match up exactly. If you roll them together you can be sure of that. Then place a pin through to hold them together. Now turn the bag round to the other side. 
and find the other side seam of the bag outer and the other side seam of the bag lining and pin them together. This makes sure the outer and the lining are sitting together in exactly the right place by doing the side seams first. Now tuck the lining inside the outer all the way along and you're going to pin all the raw edges together but you'll have to keep rearranging it as you go because it's important that the casing stays folded towards the inside and that the handles stay facing towards the inside so that you don't catch the ends of the handle in this seam that you're going to stitch in a minute. So just keep pushing them inwards, match all the raw edges and pin them together. You'll see that the ends of the handles are sticking out above the top of the seam. This gives them extra strength because they can't be pulled out later on when you filled your bag with all of your craft supplies. So push the lining right inside so it doesn't get caught. And now you're going to stitch it together all the way around this top edge. Once that's done and you've got a nice neat seam, find the turning gap in the bottom of the lining, push your hand right inside and grab hold of the bag outer and pull it out all the way through the turning gap until the bag is turned completely right sides out. Now the turning gap needs to be stitched closed. So making sure the edges are folded to the inside, put the two edges together and pop a couple of pins in just to hold the turning gap closed. Now you're going to stitch this turning gap closed. You can either do it by machine using a top stitch or you can slip stitch it by hand, whichever you prefer. Once that's stitched neatly closed, push the bag lining inside the bag outer. All of making sure that the bottom corners match up. Now rearrange it so that the casing sits above the bag lining and outer. Now, if you tacked your handles into place before your assembly, which I tend to do because it keeps them laying straight, because sometimes they can end up a bit wonky when you're stitching the seam that you've just done. So if you've done that, undo these tacking stitches at this stage, because when we stitch the top stitch line in a moment, they need to be facing upwards. It's worth doing this because it does mean that you get straight handles and you don't have to unpick anything later on. So just take a little bit of time to tack and then just unpick them. Now once that's done, push the lining back inside again, make sure those bottom corners meet up. And you're going to work a top stitch around the top edge all the way around the top. You could start just off the centre of one side. You see this top stitch is worked just a little bit below the seam. The handles are facing upwards and there's the top stitched edge and it holds the lining in place neatly from the inside too. Adding the drawstring. Now you need to put the drawstring through. I've used piping cord for mine, but you can use ribbon or cord. Thread it, attach it to a bodkin or a safety pin. I prefer to use a bodkin because sometimes safety pins can come undone, but it's entirely up to you. Thread it through the casing on one side all the way along. You'll find the casing is nice and deep, so it's quite easy to thread through. Once you get it through one side of the casing, just thread it straight through and into the other side. Now 
Now thread it all the way through this casing. until it comes out through the other side of the casing. Pull it all the way through, then you can remove the cord or ribbon from your bodkin or safety pin. Take the two ends of your cord and make sure that they're matching and knot them together. Make a nice tight knot so that it doesn't come undone. Now all you need to do to close the bag is to pull up the cord. You'll find now the handles are in exactly the right place for when you're carrying it. Now if you want to use your duffel tote as a storage bag for while you're working, maybe you're keeping a sewing project in it or some yarn, fold over the top edge of it so that the pockets are sitting on the top. You can then use it to work from. You can put things in the pockets, whether it's knitting needles, crochet hooks, scissors, needles, any of your items, and store things inside your bag as well. Then, when you're ready to go again and you want to keep it stored up, unfold it and your beautiful duffel tote is now finished.